Okay, so in this chapter, before I go on and go over more of like the workings of the engine, I want to show you two very, very powerful resources. Now in Unreal Engine 5, these are actually built into the engine. That is if you go to content, we have our marketplace and our Quixel bridge. The reason I show this is because many starters often forget about this. But if you ever just want to quickly get some models or you just want to get some stuff, some levels to play with, completely free, but also paid, then these are really, really powerful. So opening the marketplace. This is basically the Unreal Engine marketplace. It is a digital platform where you can buy or download um, lots of different maps and everything else. As you can see over here, like you can get everything from characters to models to scripts to tools, everything that is for Unreal Engine, you can find in here. Now, if we, for example, go in here, something that I just want to show you that's very cool is if we, for example, go to free and then you have two, you have three, four months. So these are completely free for you for this specific month. Ooh, this one is actually looking really cool. So I will download that later. And you, of course, also have the permanently free collection in which you can just download even entire levels completely for free. Now, the reason I want to show you this is because in our case, I can quickly like use these models to just create something interesting. But just in general, it's a really cool asset. So, for example, what you can do here is like um, some cars, for example. You can, for example, just go in here, click it. Then you can press R to project. And then it will ask you for a project. So the project that we need, I called it um, Unreal Engine 5. Sorry, show all projects. Unreal Engine 5 over here asset. Now, basically, there is one problem with Unreal Engine 5. And that is that it is not yet supported because it is in the early access by all asset packs. Um, this is a tricky thing. Now, you can, of course, don't add. So what you can, of course, do is you can go in and you can, for example, download an Unreal Engine 4 project, import it in there. And then basically simply upgrade that project to Unreal Engine 5. Or what you can do is whenever you download something. So uh, let me see. Can I here? Uh, let me just grab this one. Show in folder. It should work. Okay. So this is how your project looks here. You can see it. If you go here, show in Explorer. See, this is how your project looks. You have basically your content folder. And in here, it would, for example, import an asset. So if I go... One second, let me just try to find this asset. So if I go in content, you can see here, this is how it would look. It would just have the name of whatever you have in the store. What you can do is it is more manual, but you could literally just copy and then go into your folder, for example, and then simply paste it in here. Once it has pasted it in, if you go in here, now it might need a second because it needs to still upgrade, but it will have all of your assets in here. So at least you have your assets. So I could still go in here. And I could drag in this asset and it just needs to then, of course, regenerate your asset. But as you can see, it's all, it's all data. So it all works the same way. And you can do the same thing for maps. Now, this will change later on, of course. This is just a little workaround that you need to do right now. But if I, for example, go to my marketplace, uh, there are already assets that are specific to Unreal Engine 5. Now, I don't know why it doesn't want to load. So let me just pause the video. Okay, so yeah, most projects are not supported by Unreal Engine 5, unfortunately. But because I find this such a powerful tool, because you can find so much stuff in here, I do not want to hold you back. So I'm just going to very quickly show you. Simply go into your library and just download like an Unreal Engine 4 version. And then you can always just go ahead and you just can create a new project in it. I will go ahead and do that now. So here we go. This is just like the creation of an Unreal Engine 4 project. You will just get this window when you launch your project. And I've simply launched Unreal Engine 4.26 and just place it somewhere and just call it like something handy like market pro products. So this way you can just always import products into this specific project, which is of course very nice. And here we go. So here we have the Unreal Engine 4, which as you can see looks quite different. So why am I showing you all this? This is because there is a way that you can actually migrate between different engines and entire asset packs. It's a little bit safer than doing the copy paste technique. So for example, here I am back in the marketplace in the permanently free collection. And I can simply, for example, open this and now I can add this to a project and I can select market products, which is the project that I have opened up. I can simply press add. And then what it will do is it will just go ahead and it will download the project. 
Now this one is not too big and luckily my download speed is quite large or quite fast. So what I will do is I will just pause the video until this is done. Okay, so that's now done and it will have automatically of course imported it into your engine. Now I'm not yet going to open it, this is because when you open it, it needs to regenerate everything. But what I can do, is I can right click, I can press migrate, which I did show you earlier. And then just yeah, select everything and press ok. And then it will ask you, ok, where do you want to migrate this to? We want to migrate this to our content folder of our Unreal Engine. So here we have the Unreal Engine folder, remember if you want to find this, you can just... Click on the content, right click and press show in explorer. But basically you can just use this, press content and in here you can just select the folder. And then what it will do, it will copy the files. You need the content folder. If you don't do that, it will simply say like, oh yeah, this is wrong. I am not going to do anything. But anyway, at this point what we can do is we can just go ahead and we can close this. We don't need it. And now if we go in Unreal Engine, we will now have over here our rural Australia. Now the lighting might be a little bit different because it is switching between Unreal Engine 4 and 5. But we can go ahead and we can give it a try. So we can go to the maps over here. And the maps are basically your levels. So you can go ahead and you can for example open up a level. If you for example want to save this level you can of course go to file. And you can just save current level S. And then you can save it however you want. So let's go ahead and pick example 1. Now because this will take quite a while. Uh, yeah, here. So now it will ask you whenever you open up a different level, do you want to save whatever we did here? So sure, let's save it. Now it will open this up. As I said, it might take a while because it needs to regenerate all of those optimizations. Uh, it needs to regenerate something that's called mesh distance fields. Um, it needs to just uh, in general regenerate all of your models, audio effects and everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. This might take a few minutes depending on how fast your PC is. Or it can take a very long time. So I'm going to pause the video and then when we are back, I can show you. So here you can see a good example that I have opened up my level, but I cannot really do anything yet. Don't worry, down here, you can see, here I'm, I'm, I'm almost able to move, it's very, very slow. Here you see, so I am able to move, so it's a very large level actually. But uh, down here you can see that it is just generating all your textures, all your materials, and this is totally normal. So you don't need to worry about this. I will once again pause the video until this is completely done, which as you can see how slow it goes. Uh, I think I'm just gonna get a drink while this is working. Okay, so the level is done loading as you can see. So here we just have our level and as you can see everything is ready to go. Now the lighting as I said before might be a little bit different. This is just because uh, you would need to set it up for Unreal Engine 5. But that's something that we won't go over. It's more about that you have your assets and everything ready to go. So you just have the assets that you can now drag in. Of course, if you want to make this a li look a little bit nicer, you can always set the screen percentage to 200, which on levels like these will make everything quite a bit slower, but you can see that you get like some nicer, higher resolution. Okay, so one last thing that I wanted to show you, which is also very important and kind of ties in perfectly with this, is what you can see in this level is you can see a lot of photogrammetry data. Photogrammetry basically means that people go out and they scan 3D assets and textures in real life and then turn it into 3D and so that you can use it in Unreal Engine or any other 3D program. Now, there is a company which is called Quixel and if you go down here to content and type in Quixel Bridge and this company, it is actually owned by Unreal Engine. They recently bought it a few, about like half a year ago or something and basically so this means that everything on here is free. This is a massive library. I'm talking 15,459 different types of assets, massive, of photogrammetry scan data. Everything from 3D assets, assets to plants to surfaces to decals and more. So for example, if you would go to 3D assets, this is really cool. You can find whatever you want. I'm you, I would say just, oh sorry, it's auto saving. And when it's out saving, it closes the window. Um, so just find whatever you want. But let's say that I go to 3D assets and nature. And these actually look a little bit like desert rocks. So you can, for example, grab those. Just like rocks that look like the desert. So with all this stuff, it is really cool. I can go like, okay, rock. And I can go like a sandstone, for example. And in here, I just have all of these different types of rocks. Which is really nice. Now, if I just go ahead and like find one, let's say... 
I think this stuff would, for example, look quite nice. You can click on it. And then all you need to do, because it is connected to Unreal Engine, is over here you need to choose what you want. Medium quality. And you can also use Nanite, which is new. Uh, medium quality, low quality, high quality. The higher you go, the slower it will be. So I will just go for medium quality. Next to that, you do have some settings if you want. And these settings, they, because it is now integrated into Unreal Engine 5, it's really nice. You can just go ahead and like if you need to change any settings. I do not have any settings, so I can just leave it. Now you want to press sign in, which I will do. You will just need to sign in using your Unreal Engine account, which you need anyway if you want to be able to download Unreal Engine. Here we go. And then what you can do is you can simply press download. And what it will do is you can see the percentage over here. It will just download this. And it shouldn't take too long as you can see. And then you can simply press add. And it will add it to this project. So that's now added. As you can see it is loading. Now we can, you can minimize or close this. As I said before. You can do this with everything. With 3D assets, plants. But also actual materials. It will already set up your materials for you. It will set up the model for you. It will set up the LODs. Everything it will set up for you. It's not always perfect. But most of the time it is. And for example this is like where you can see it. You will now have a folder called Megascans in your content browser. And then we have a 3D asset and it is our sandstone. It is this simple. We can simply drag this in here. And then of course you maybe like want to scale it up or down or something like that. And like that you will have like your sandstone. Although um, the material is not looking as nice as I was hoping for. But that might just be like some balancing. So... With this, of course, I would then need to balance it to this scene. But it, this is just an example. So you can like open it up and here you can see like your material and everything. And how everything looks. So this stuff is really cool. And as I said before, yeah, you can um, just grab like also like more generic assets. We have a little bit of time left. So let me just quickly grab, for example, like a... Um, uh, let's see, Let, let's go like for a plant actually. Let's do 3D plants because they, these are often really good. And you can, go, for example, go to uh, like a flowering plant. And here, let's grab like this one, medium quality. And uh, we can just go ahead and download this. And it will download it for us. And then we can add this. And here you can see it will very quickly add these big leaf plants over here. Now, of course, they would not really fit with this environment. That's the thing. With Megascans, they work really well together. But if you are using them in an environment that is not Megascans, you sometimes just need to go ahead and balance things out. But you can just drag this in here. And just like that, you will have a flower. And if you press G to go into game mode, you can see now that we have this really nice looking flower. And it is of really high quality. It's just that we need to balance it out. Which you can do by simply clicking, for example, on the material... And there are like a bunch of settings in here that you can use in order to balance it out. But uh, that's something, once again, that we will go over later on. So that's your general idea for this. I would say have a play around with it. Try importing some models. Even for the road, often urban models do work better when you are using, for example, a different scene. So you can, for example, go to street and then like barrier. And then in here, if you, for example, like grab this barrier, stuff like that. So this kind of stuff does work a little bit better because it is urban. It fits a little bit better. So you can just drag it in. See? So this stuff works a little bit better with le levels like this. And, oh, don't know what happened there. And just like that, we have a nice looking barrier. Even though it is not completely sitting in the ground. But we will go over like doing level, a little bit of level art and like moving and placing some stuff around later on. But just like that, we have a nice looking barrier that is sitting here. Sorry about the jumping, that's because sometimes I lose my FPS a little bit, because this scene is a little bit heavy. So, that's it for this chapter. In the next chapter, what we'll do is we will go over a little bit more in detail how to place objects in your level, uh, how to use the snapping and all the other little tools. We already went over it a little bit in the interface, but I just want to go ahead and like go a little bit more in depth over it.